So what we want to do next is make these buttons active. All right, right now, these are all buttons, but you see there we got a, we got a click and then it, it generated an error. Um, it looks like we have already started to do it. Huh. All right, well, I'm going to delete this. Okay, um, and we're just going to kind of work through it again. Um, wait, I deleted too much. There we go. All right, um, so in order to detect the clicks, all right, in order to detect the clicks in the event handler object, um, now, really, actually, I'm going to come back. To, you guys don't need to delete it. If it's in your program, you don't need to delete it. It's fine. I'm going to back this up a step and remind you what we did. All right. So we want to be able to detect the clicks inside of the Minesweeper game, right? And, and our Minesweeper, our Minesweeper inherits from the game object. All right. So what we want to do is we want to use the principle of polymorphism, the fact that we can transform any function from what it was to something new by redefining it in a child object. Minesweeper is a child of game. And you'll recall that that means that everything that game has, Minesweeper also has and can change. Okay? So game has a function called run, right, which executes the game itself. And we don't modify this one because we just want these three things to happen every time it runs. We calculate delta time, which is super important. We have an event handler, which um, has some sample code, right? So we had some sample code here in the event handler, right? And then we have this update function, all right, which just printed game originally. Now, of course, it does much more than that. What we want to do is we want to override this function. That's why it's called, all right? We want to override the event handler to detect clicks on our squares. So I'm just going to highlight the event handler code, and I'm going to press Control C. Then we're going to flip back over to Minesweeper.py, and down here after update, we're going to go Control V to paste in the event handler. Make sure of the indentation. All right, you should have one uh, tab of indentation to the left of the de definition of the event handler function. All right, and then, okay, so this doesn't do anything, right? I mean, it prints, right? Um, but that's not what we want to do. Okay, so when we click, right, when we click, what we want to do is check to see if the button was clicked. All right, remember that this grid right here, this grid of buttons, these are all clickable. Okay, um, they all have clickable properties. So what we need to do is to determine if one of those buttons um, was the one that got clicked. Okay, so we have to check all the buttons, and then we have to check the position of the mouse and see which one of them got in the way of the, of the mouse click, if any of them did. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say for button in button, soft buttons, actually. Okay, and we're going to put a colon. So for button and self dot button. So this is going to go through the whole array, all right? And then what we want to do is we want to check to see if that button was clicked on. So we'll say if button dot was clicked on, all right? So what was clicked on is a function that returns true or false. If it was clicked on, what do we want to do? We want to flip the button, right? So button dot flip. Okay, let's see if this throws that error message or not. We just click. Yep, there it is. So we got a we got a nice flip there. All right, so we should be able to click and flip all 25 buttons. So you didn't you didn't see me do it there, but I clicked outside of the grid to see if anything would happen. Um, that's uh, just a feature of play testing. So I'm clicking here and I'm just confirming that it works. 
All right, so there it is. This is cool, all right, but we have the same problem that we had before, uh, which is that if we collapse this grid, so right now we have a space of 10. If I collapse that space to zero, then we have this nice checkerboard pattern here, so it's easy to figure out what to click. But as soon as I clear four spaces, I can no longer tell the difference between any of my squares. You see that? Okay. So we need to duplicate our light dark code so that the 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 um, the other part. So this this part. Okay. So that the other part of our of our button also has a shade difference, all right? So that's your challenge here, is to try to code, right, using the light dark that we've already got as a model, okay? See if you can code for light and dark tan as well, all right? As a hint, okay, um, adding the word green to our existing variables will differentiate them between a dark green color and they say a dark tan color. Just a thought, something you could try to do. All right, take some time here and see if you can pull that off.